You're listening to the Tells of Leadership podcast. This podcast is for leaders at any phase on their leadership journey to become a more purposeful and accountable leader, what I like to call a pal. Join me on our journey together towards transformational leadership. All right, team, welcome back to the Tales of Leadership podcast. I'm your host, Josh McMillian, an active duty Army officer and the founder of McMillian Leadership Coaching. And I'm on a mission to create a better leader, what I like to call a purposeful, accountable leader or a pal. And my vision is to share transformational stories and skills to promote transformational leadership and impact 1 million lives in the next 10 years. And I plan to do that by bringing on amazing leaders and then walking through some leadership skills that can help you grow on your leadership journey. On today's episode, we're going to be walking through how to build your house of leadership. And before we start, all credit goes to J.R. Flatter of Two Roads Leadership. He was the one who really was the brainchild behind this. But my goal is to walk you through the framework I used to build my house of leadership. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So building your house of leadership. Every leader has a leadership philosophy, but not every leader can clearly define what it is. To be a purposeful, accountable leader or a pal, you must consider your leadership philosophy and confidently know what that is. A way to achieve this is by creating a symbolic house encompassing your leadership style. The House of Leadership or Hall was, again, developed by J.R. Flatter and removes the typical leadership philosophy with a visual aid that really has four steps. Leaders create the four walls using their characteristics and their values. Third, leaders choose the components of their house consisting of the principles and beliefs. And remember T-ball, right? Thoughts, beliefs, actions, our legacy. If you want to define your legacy, it takes thoughts, shape our beliefs, beliefs drive our actions, and action defines our legacy. And finally, each house must have a roof, which should take them somewhere. Remember, leadership is a journey. It's not a destination. You are leading in the dark unless you give intentional time to think about the leader you choose to be. So we're going to go through seven steps in this framework that I use the acronym INSPIRE to help you craft your leadership. And here is a quote by Ralph Emerson. Our chief want is someone who will inspire us to be what we know we could be. So the first one in our acronym that we're going to be walking through INSPIRE is identify your beliefs. The first step in crafting your house of leadership is understanding what your beliefs are. To accomplish this, you must reflect on the defining moments that shape your life. Our beliefs are shaped by our environment, both our past and then our present. Beliefs are powerful because they create two things. First is bias, which leads to inaction. The second is drive, resulting in inaction. To understand your house of leadership, reflect on moments in time that define you. What core values do you have, and are those values the same today? If those values have changed, why? After you've isolated those memories and determined what your core values are, it's time to really reflect on the principles you continuously emulate and go back to in your life. Principles compose our moral and ethical compass. It is a metaphorical compass that we use in the military. We always have to have our azimuth. Our azimuth takes us to our next destination or our next point. It is guiding us on our daily decisions. I like uh, to call this our true north, and that's one of the rules that I have, the rule of true north. Before you can start raising your house of leadership and build your frame, spend the time determining the material that is needed for that house and the foundation. Purposeful, accountable leaders understand the core values and principles that guide their decisions. All right, so the next one in the acronym INSPIRE, N, is to narrate your passion and your purpose. And remember, stories inspire, not just us, but everyone around us. All right, team, let's take a quick break from this episode. And I want to share a message from McMillian Leadership Coaching, a company that I founded. So what do I do? I help leaders discover their purpose, create long-term growth plans, and take inspired action. 
I believe everything rises and falls on leadership. Regardless of where you are in life, one fact is true. You are a leader of others, your family, and most importantly, yourself. To lead others well starts with you. Stop surviving and start thriving in life. Here's three easy steps to get started. Go to mcmillionleadershipcoaching.com and schedule a call today. It's free. You have nothing to lose. Number two, start the 100-day leadership challenge. And then number three, simply grow your leadership. We all have greatness inside, but it's up to us to forge those abilities. Become the leader your team needs. Back to the podcast. The second step in building our house of leadership is clearly communicating your passion and your purpose. Start off by finding your Christmas morning. Growing up and still today, I have always loved Christmas morning. It's not about the gifts. Instead, it's about the joy of bringing hope and cheer to other people, especially my children. Just seeing them wake up with amazement is one of the best things in my life. It's about being selfless, not selfish, and spending time with those you love. To start building your house of leadership, vividly define what your passion is. What action brings you overwhelming joy every day when you wake up knowing that you're going to be doing it. Once you've described your Christmas morning, then discover your purpose or really your why. Why is your passion important to you and what moments in time galvanize your resolve? Once you've narrated your passion and found your purpose, find a way to connect them. Leaders create power and momentum by combining their passion and their purpose. And then I have a formula for fulfillment in life, and it's the three Ps, passion, purpose, plus perspective. Purposeful, accountable leaders understand their Christmas morning and have joined their passion and their purpose together. So the next is selecting your foundation. This is the third step in creating your house of leadership is selecting your foundation. And this is the most pivotal one. The bedrock for any house of leadership is the hardest, but most important to discover. For example, I did not learn my foundation until I was 35 years old. However, once I found it, I immediately realized that's where I wanted to build my house of leadership. Start with the question, how do I want others to remember me? And how do I choose to lead others? You're beginning to understand your legacy when you can answer those questions. The foundation you select must be closely connected to your passion and your purpose. If it is not, your foundation will fail the test of time. Understanding where to build and what your bedrock is composed of is absolutely critical in your leadership philosophy or your house of leadership. Your house will collapse if you rush this process when you build it on a weak foundation. Purposeful, accountable leaders take the time to find the right spot, and then they start building their house of leadership. So the next step is placing your walls. After you select your core values and you raise your roof, ensure you are using these guidelines. First, your walls must be forward-looking. Our past shapes our present and molds our beliefs, but you must be focused on the journey ahead, and that is critical. Don't live in the past. Second, allow the light to flow through your house of leadership. When leaders can lead with windows, they allow transparency within the leadership, transparency within their leadership philosophy, which is vital to build trust and earn respect. Third, Capture the core values that guide your actions. We all have non-negotiable values. However, it takes time to self-reflect to discover those. A way to start is to search your organization's values. And we kind of talked through that in some other previous episodes. Do they resonate with you and why do they resonate with you? Finally, discover your priorities in your life, your pillars, the things that you intentionally want to grow in. These are specific areas in our lives that it, night our burning desire. Make sure you're balancing those areas in your house of leadership so you don't become one-sided. Purposeful, accountable leaders raise their walls and allow the light to flow through and provide a clear vision of the future. The next one is insulate your framing. 
The fifth step to crafting your house of leadership is to include the components and the principles that define you. What characteristics and daily behaviors do you practice and have practiced? Your principles must mutually support the walls and foundation you've already determined. Start by understanding your strengths. We all have unique traits and abilities that allow us to thrive in our environment. The hard part is discovering those strengths, but there are ways to help. For example, you can take a strength assessment. You can get feedback from your peers, or you can do self-reflection or even get a coach. However, you define your strength. Ensure it's authentic, and that's critical because leadership must be authentic, and you cannot emulate a strength that you do not possess. You need to understand what your strengths are. Avoid using buzzwords here, too, especially, unless they're genuinely something that you believe in, like transformational or vision and stuff like that. It should be stuff that you truly believe in and that you can emulate it authentically. The most essential part of selecting your principles is aligning your words and your deeds. Remember, deeds, not words. It doesn't matter what you say, but if your actions don't align with those, you're never going to gain traction. Purposeful, accountable leaders insulate their house of leadership with authentic principles aligned with their actions and their words. All right, team, let's take a quick break from the podcast episode. And I want to share a leadership tool or resource with you. And that is resiliency based leadership program. The RBLP's vision is to create a worldwide community of practice committed to building and leading resilient teams. And there's three different types of certifications that they focus on. And that is frontline supervisors, middle managers, or senior leaders. So why do we need to build and lead resilient teams? Resilient teams are the key to individual and organizational growth, regardless of being in a military or in the civilian workforce. Building collective resilience teams exponentially increases our abilities to overcome adversity, adapt, and then grow. And then bottom line up front, resilient teams are just stronger together. That's a fact. This is something that I am certified in and that I truly believe in. The best part is it's probably 100% free to you. So if you're in the military and you're active duty, you have up to $4,000 a year through the Army Credentialing Assistance Program to pay for these types of certifications that will help you in your military career, but also when you transition out of the military. And if you work in a civilian organization, you have direct education benefits or tuition assistance that can help cover the cost to this. So here is some facts for you guys. 99% of the people that go through this recommend it to other people. 89% of the people believe after completing this course that they will be better compensated and have better career longevity along the way. 97% are more confident after completing this in their leadership abilities, which ultimately leads to better mission command or autonomy within a workforce. And this one is the most important. 96% of people believe that it will increase trust within the organization. So if you want to learn more, you can go into the show notes or click the link resilientbuildingleader.com and learn everything you need to know about the RBLP vision and mission and how to get started. And if you want to get started, use the discount code J-M-C-M-I-L-L-I-O-N, no spaces or all caps. And this will be something that gives you an additional discount. And yes, I do get compensated for this, but this is something that I genuinely believe in and is aligned with my core values and my mission of building more purposeful, accountable leaders. Let's go back to the podcast. And the next is raising the roof, right? So the sixth step in building your house of leadership is fitting the roof. Think of the roof as the umbrella for your leadership style. This roof must align with your head, your heart, and your hands, the rule of three Ps, and balance each part of your house of leadership. First, to involve your head, the roof must inspire you to see what is possible when each element works in an equilibrium. Second, your roof must engage the heart. If you are not emotionally connected to the journey, you're leaving room for doubt and fear to erode your foundation. And third, enlist the hands. Leadership is chaotic and messy. 
you will never achieve extraordinary results in your chosen profession unless you actively participate in the process. Purposeful, accountable leaders select their roof enthusiastically because they understand their journey and where they want to go in life. And then the last one in building your house of leadership is establishing your strength statement. The seventh and final step of your house of leadership is absolutely critical. And I like to visualize this as the landscape that goes around your house. The strength statement is the affirmation that acts like a battery and supercharges your home by providing clarity. First, start by reflecting on the teachable moments in your life. What experiences shaped you and how are you grateful for those opportunities? The good, but especially the bad. And second, your strength statement must center you in challenging moments. When your house of leadership is tested, your strength statement should take you back to important life lessons while simultaneously looking forward to what the possibilities are. And that's hard. Once you've discovered your strength statement, share your house of leadership with others and get feedback because that is the quickest way to tell you if you're being authentic or not because people know who you are when you show up. There's always people watching you. The most important part is sharing your house of leadership with those in your inner circle. When you review this with them, it must spark a deep connection. If you get goosebumps when you're briefing this to your peers or individuals that you know, like, and trust, you have nailed it. Purposeful accountable leaders select the statement so powerful that when it's spoken, it demands a response. And I'll share mine with you, and you've probably heard it a million times, and you're going to hear it a million more. But every day is a gift. Don't waste yours. All right, team, this was a relatively short episode, and, and that's good. What we're going to be starting now is our hot wash or after action review for building your house of leadership. But remember, this is something that is going to take time. And I also have a series. This is the very first part of several episodes that I'm going to be dropping, just like when we went through the six phases of leadership to help you build your house of leadership, because this is one of the core competencies that you need to understand. And this is something that is critical in the leadership coaching that I also offer. So let's get into the hot wash. Leaders inspire others to push beyond possibilities and reach new heights. That's the bottom line. To help others achieve their potential, you must clearly define the leader you choose to be. And it does not matter if you're leading yourself, if you're leading your family, if you're leading a community, if you're leading an organization, a team, a business, you're a leader. You have to know who you are to do that. There is no correct answer when you're building your house of leadership because we're all unique. We all have our own God-given strengths and weaknesses. Your responses will be discovered by reflecting on your past and then dreaming into your future of who you want to be. Start by setting a firm foundation. That's absolutely critical. The hardest part of creating your leadership philosophy is finding the location that you want to build your forever home. And once you discover that, your house will just naturally come together. After your house of leadership is complete, remember it's vital to share it with others that you genuinely know, like, and trust, and that you respect. I've crafted several versions of my house of leadership, and it's changed and matured over time. So this is also something that you should go back to, and you should reflect on at least every year. But every time that you change a new leadership position, you definitely need to revisit this. Remember, leadership is a journey. We must remain curious, coachable, and committed. The rule of three C's. Purposeful, accountable leaders understand their house of leadership will change over time because they're committed to growth. All right, team. So here's three questions that you need to spend some time reflecting on through this episode. Number one is describe your ideal location to build your house of leadership. What does your bedrock look like? Number two, what values from your work resonate with you? Number three, what leader do you want to become? And how do you want to be remembered? What is your legacy? And everything that I've covered 
up to this point, you can always go to mcmillianleadershipcoaching.com because every single time that I provide you a leadership skill, I've always written a blog about it. So that way you don't have to take notes. You can go back there any given time. You can read it because I want you to use this to grow and be a better leader. Everything that I offer in one-on-one leadership coaching, well, here's the surprise. I give it to you guys for free in a podcast and I do it in free in a blog because again, I'm not trying to make money. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring light into this world. So team, help me out. If you like what you're hearing so far, share this podcast. Number two, make sure you give me a five-star review or just review the podcast and then whatever platform that you're listening. Number three, go to talesofleadership.buzzsprout.com or mcmillionleadershipcoaching.com and click on the podcast link and support this podcast. And it will allow me to continue to make great content. And then finally, go check out the other leadership resources that I have to offer in terms of the blog. You can go to McMillian Leadership Coaching, but also follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook and join our Purposeful Accountable Leaders private Facebook group. All you have to do is search Purposeful Accountable Leaders and you'll find it. As always, I'm your host, Josh McMillian, saying every day is a gift. Don't waste yours. I'll see you next time.